Debbie Marcou is licensed by the Department of Business Oversight under the California Residential Mortgage Lender Act, NMLS ID 237926. Also licensed in Arizona, 0941504, Florida, 76508, Georgia, 69178, Illinois, 031.0058339, Nevada, 57237, Oregon, Tennessee, 184373, Texas, Washington, 237926. Heidi Cycle Points, DBO, 1666881, Arizona, 101648. She's a mortgage mom. She can get things done. When you're in need and don't know where to go, pick up the phone and call mom. Okay, yep, you should be all set now. All right, here we well, we You want to try it first? Yeah, we have some PowerPoint issues. There it is. Look at that. We got it first time. First time out. It only took Woo-hoo. a step. What is this <laughs> word unit? We're in unit number what are we, 9, 10? Uh, 10 or 11, I can't 10 remember 10 or 11, we're 11. This 11. is unit 11. So it only took us 11 units to get this PowerPoint piece down. And probably the next time that we do one, next week, it will be wrong. So that's okay. <laughs> as long as this one's right. Right, as long, exactly. <laughs> good today. Exactly. So uh, what's the best way to contact us? Well, you guys download the phone app. It is really all of the best information you can have at your fingertips. It's got the calculators in there that are going to run the payments for you for conventional, FHA, USDA, and um, uh, what did I say? Conventional, FHA, VA. I knew I was missing one. VA and uh, USDA. And what's cool about it is that it's going to throw the funding fee in if it's a VA loan. It's going to throw in the mortgage insurance if it's an FHA loan or a conventional with less than 20% down. So it's really a very cool calculator to have. From the phone app, you can contact us. So you can send me an email. You can ask me questions. You can call Cindy. You can email Cindy. Um, You can contact just about anybody on the team. And then you can actually apply for your loan right through the phone app. You can listen to the podcast right through the phone app. So tons and tons of you know tools right at your fingertips. And it's awesome if you're out there looking for a home and trying to buy a property. So um, get that, get the phone app, text the word mom to 36260. And how nice is that for someone to be able to put in different purchase prices and learn what their payments are? Yeah. Instead of having to call each time and say, hey, $5,000 more, $5,000 more. Right. So it's right there. Oh, awesome. yeah. I love it. Oh, yeah. No, it's. Honestly, I get emails all the time where somebody will ask me, can you give me a monthly payment at 400, 410, 420, 430, 440, yeah. 450? Because they're wanting, you know, they're wanting to try to budget and I can totally get yeah. that. But it's easier for me to text them back and say, download my phone app. Click on the little phone in my email signature. Download the phone app. Because that way I can tell them you need one and a quarter percent for those property taxes. Yeah. You know, for your homeowner's insurance based on whatever number that we talked about you know, for their sales price, I'll say put in 1200 for your insurance and then, you know, use a three and a half percent for the interest rate, whatever the program is that they're doing, whatever the numbers are that make sense. And then they can just play with that thing as many times as they want. And I'll tell you, what's really cool too. I've actually shopped for cars and you can change it from 30 years to 15 to 20 to five. You use it for your car shopping. I too. use it for my car <laughs> shopping. I want to know what I'm going to be paying for that car. <laughs> So it's actually, it's a pretty cool little thing. If you don't have it, text the word mom to 36260 and get it. You're going to get a link. All you got to do is click on it and save it to your home screen. So uh, we do have our Facebook going. We've been really, really bad about keeping up on our Instagram page. So it is there, but you're not going to see anything new. Our Facebook page is um, very up to date. So you guys can follow us there if you do like Facebook, if that's your thing. Obviously, YouTube, we're doing these shows uh, live at five every Wednesday. And then we're uploading our workshops to YouTube as well. So this is probably where we are the most active. Active. So follow us there. You can always call us. It's 844-935-3634. And hey, if you guys like the education that we're giving you or you've worked with us in the past and you really enjoyed your experience and you felt that it was great, the best thing you could possibly do for us is give us a review. Please go to Google, go to Yelp, give us a review, read the reviews. If you're thinking about maybe giving us a call, read the reviews that are there. See if you feel like we're maybe a fit for you. But if you are getting this education and you're enjoying it, we're not charging you for it. Give us a call, get on the books. We'll do a free consultation with you and give us a review. We'd absolutely love that. We really appreciate it. If you can help us, we'll help you. (laughs) Always. Right. (laughs) Exactly. All right. So here we go. All right, so we've brought you through the home buyer workshop so far. I started at buzzwords. What does this mean? That's fun. Mm-hmm. Um, then we moved on to what is a VA loan, an FHA loan. We did a uh, conventional loan. We did USDA. We did jumbo. We did bank statements. So now that you understand what each of the loan programs are, we actually did one that said, what are the documents that you would need to um, 
uh, approve, you know, get pr- approved for the loan, but we will roll through that again today. Um, but, uh, now you guys are ready, right? You, you know what loan program it is. You're, you're, you're ready to jump in. You're, you're ready to get yourself pre-approved. So what is the difference between a pre-approval and a pre-qualification? So Cindy, I'm going to let you talk about that one because I'm sure you get that a lot right? Oh, all the time. And people don't understand what they're sh- when they're actually out shopping, they need a pre-approval. Right. And in order to get their pre-approval, you have to get pre-qualified first, which means you need to come and discuss it with a loan officer and go over your credit score, how much money you have down, all the, all the little aspects that go into a loan. So when you get pre-qualified, it's just our opinion on the loan. If you get pre-approved, it's the underwriter's decision and a commitment to lend. Right. So the, and, and the, the cool thing is, is that, you know, we're, we're different, right? Um, as a team, number one, we're not even going to get you a pre-qualification letter unless we have actually gathered everything from you. Uh, we want to know your income. We want to know, pull your credit report. We want to figure out your debt to income ratio. We want to figure all that stuff out. We want to know that you've got the money to close. If you don't have the money, you're getting a gift. Where's it coming from? Show us the goods. And at that point in time, by the time that we literally have everything, then we can go ahead. We've already got it all. So why would we stop there? Yeah. Right. Why stop? If we've already collected it from you and we're saying, Hey, we're going to give you our pre-qualification. Why would we stop there? We might as well just move it on forward and, you know, get it reviewed and get that pre-approval letter out to that person. So it really does mean it is a big difference pre-qualified versus pre-approved. If you have a pre-approval letter from a lender who did not gather the documents from you, they did not look at your pay stub. You filled out an application online. You told them how much money that you make. You told them how much money that you have available for down payment. That is not a pre-approval at all (laughs) not even close so um, you want to make sure that you guys are going the extra the extra mile so what is a mortgage mom radio pre-approval and I get um, this a lot I'm like you know why are why people call they get on the calendar and they talk to us right and we've got this uh, we've we've got our calendar and we make them actually book an appointment and we do it for an hour long and they wonder why they call in and they want to talk to somebody right away and Matt's like no you've got to you know, you've got to book a schedule and we've actually had people hang up on them. We've had people get aggravated and irritated because they have to wait for a calendar event, right? They have to wait for an appointment. Why do we do that? Well, we do it because we want to take the time with you. We need to put an hour aside that is you only. It doesn't matter if there's other phones ringing. It doesn't matter if there's other emails coming in. You are our attention, you know, that you're getting our attention. It is you and you only. So we're going to talk about your budget. Together, we're going to figure out your, you know, what is the best program for you? We're going to talk about what is your income? How much do you have available for down payment? Um, What are some of the questions that you ask when you've got somebody on the phone and you're kind of taking them through that initial consult? Well, we need to figure out where their money to close is coming from, if they have any money to close. So then we can discuss if we're good on that, get their assets verified. Um, But we also need to discuss their credit. You know, do you have a bankruptcy? Do you have judgments? Do you have child support back due on there? All the important things that may not seem that important can come back and be something you got to pay at the end. So that's just something that you always watch for too. There's so many aspects of things we watch for, but that's one. (laughs) Right, exactly. No, there's, yeah. And and it's one of those things where we just need to be able to take the time with you. And I'm going to start, you know, that consultation. And so is Cindy and everybody else on our team. We're all being trained to work the same way. We want to start with what is that monthly payment that's comfortable for you? That may not... You may not, you may qualify for more than what you actually want in a payment. So we need to talk about you and your financial health and what product is going to work. You've got 3% down, but you have a, you know, a a 800 credit score. Well, we're going to talk about maybe a 3% down conventional loan. Is this going to be a forever home? Do you only plan on being here a couple years? Do you want to pay points? You know, is it worth it to pay points or not? Because if you're going to not live there a long time... Right. You don't want to do that. Right. Right. And, and what's it's your biggest investment that you're ever going to make in your life is your home. So to take an hour out of your time to actually get a full pre-approval done to discuss it with someone, it's important. 
Right. It's very important. No, absolutely. And, you know, we're going to talk about points. Somebody could be saying right now, what are points? So we're going to, you know, we're going to talk to you about points and what do they do and what do they mean and how much do they cost you and how much should you have available? How much money are you going to need based on the circumstances that we're discussing? We have a lot of you that are, are listening to us in other states, not just California, not just Los Angeles County. We have a lot of people in California that are listening to us up north or in the Inland Empire where you've got different loan limits than Los Angeles does. So we need to find out where are you looking and then we've got to talk about what those loan limits are and then we have to talk about okay well what does that mean as far as down payment you know how much are you going to need okay well where is it going to come from oh you want to buy a six hundred thousand dollar property out in norco okay well now you're a jumbo loan oh no you can't get a gift for that down payment you know there's a lot of things that we have to discuss before we even start a loan application before you even put your name and your social security number in an app and before we even pull credit there's a lot of things that we're going to talk about and we're going to educate you and we're going to train you and we're going to bring you through all of the questions that we need to know and then by the time we're done with that conversation then we're going to get you off to the races and you're going to start your application and you're going to put all of your information in online and you're going to upload all of your documents to us then from there we're going to go ahead and we're going to review that loan and if we feel that everything is there everything is ready then we're going to get go ahead and uh, get that file submitted and get that pre-approval issued so um, much much different different scenario than many lenders do. I can't even tell you how many times I've had clients call me that are already in escrow and they're just shopping for a rate. They have no idea what's going on. They don't have a clue. They don't even know what rate they're shopping for. And then I mentioned, well, your lender has told you, and they're already in escrow. Yeah. Your lender has told you about closing costs. No, what's that? Okay. So let's start from the beginning, you know, and by the time that we're done, sometimes, unfortunately, they're backing out of the property because they had no idea. What are impounds? Why are these so much money? Why are you charging me so much money for impounds? Well, it's your impounds. It's your taxes. It's your insurance. But unless you're trained and explained all this stuff, you have no clue. I mean, this is our job. That's why we're here to teach you. Right. And educate you. So when you hang up the phone, you're going, I feel confident. I feel good. If I have a question, I can call her back, get all my answers. Right, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that is the difference between us. That is the difference between Mortgage Mom Radio and the way that we work and maybe other lenders. And I'm sure I'm not saying we're the only ones that work that way. There are a lot of very, very good loan officers and very good banks out there. Um, But there's unfortunately, just like there's always a lot of good ones, there's a lot of bad ones. So, um, you know, just make sure that if you're working with somebody and it's not us, that they're educating you, they're explaining things to you, and they're truly getting you prepared. And if they're not, then you need to pick up the phone and you need to call us and you need to ask for Cindy. Um, <laughs> get on Cindy's <laughs> calendar. All you got to do is tell Matt and really like to talk to Cindy. I love to um, help you. <laughs> yep, yep, she would. All right, so we're going to get into, okay, well, number one, how do they call us? It's 844 935 three, six, three, four, get on the calendar for that consultation. Do not get upset that you have to wait for an appointment, but make the appointment so that you can talk to us and do that consultation. You will feel so much better before you're ready to actually go to the website and do the loan application. So now we are, let's pretend we've, we've gotten through the consultation, we've done the hour, and now they're going to do their application online. So we're going to give you a good idea of the documents that we would need from you. Uh, as a borrower for that pre-approval. So this is really good for you guys to understand what you need to gather in advance and be prepared to issue. So why don't you go ahead and talk about um, a wage earner? So wage earner is a W-2 employee that works for somebody. They don't own their own company. Yeah, so it's your typical job. You get a pay stub. You're either paid hourly. You could be paid bi-weekly. You could be paid monthly. You could have a salary set. Um, Just your typical W-2 job is our wage earner. And when we have a wage earner, we're going to need a pay stub, one full month worth. So that way we can document all your, all your earnings. If you had bonuses, commissions, anything like that. Hey, so all you boys down at the docks in San Pedro, we need five because there's a lot of months that have five weeks. So five, five pay stubs for you weekly guys. Okay. And girls and gals. Trust me. There's a lot of girls, lots of gals down there at the docks. (laughs) There are. All right. But five, five for you weekly people. Very good note. Yes. (laughs) And then we're always going to need two years of your W-2s, the most recent years, two months bank statements, all pages to them. Never forget. No, don't leave off that last page. We always want all pages. We got to see the whole thing. Yep. Even if it says this page intentionally left blank, 
You I have to it. send it. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll call you and ask you for it. <laughs> right, exactly. And you'll be like, why? I, th- I throw that one away. Uh, just for your all records, don't ever throw it away. Because a lot of people, and, and it's getting better, right? With so many people doing online banking, yeah. it is getting easier. So for, it's so helpful to, to just log in and download that PDF of that statement. But many people still get their statements mailed to them. And they open it up and they do their accounting each month and they throw that page away. And how many times have you run into that in your career? Oh, so many times. And yeah. then before, people would have to go to the bank to get it. Yep. They have to walk into the bank and go wait for a teller. Right. To get the last page of a bank statement that says intentionally yeah. left blank. <laughs> <laughs> and we have to have it. <laughs> right. So that, and, and you know, two years tax, uh, federal tax returns, all pages, we do not need that for a wage earner, but we do need it if you own rental property. So that is the only way we're going to be able to, you know, if, if you're buying a, a your next property or you own rental property, we're going to have to see uh, your rental income from the tax returns. And uh, let's see, is there any other reason why a wage earner would have to give us tax returns? Hmm. I don't think so. No. No. Not typically. Just a rental property. Now, if your husband is self-employed and your W-2 or vice versa, wife self-employed and your W-2, then obviously for your self-employed bar, we're going to need those two years tax returns. Yes. So uh, we're, let's get into self-employed. I'll let you take that one too. All right. So self-employed, you know, people who own their own companies, their own businesses, you file a Schedule C on your tax return. Um, You've got corporations, you've got all that fun stuff. You're you're typically self-employed. So we need two years federal tax returns, all pages. Once again, all pages. All pages. (laughs) Every single schedule. You do not have to send us your state return, just the federal return. You know, the one that you owe the lots of money on. That one. That one. All the pages. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So two years of those, two years of federal tax returns, self-employed partnership, partnership mm-hmm. or corporations, two years federal tax returns, all pages for those and K-1s. Uh, self-employed sole proprietorships, two years and all the 1099s. A profit and loss through the end of the most recent month. So throughout the year, If we're in November, I need it from January to November of the current year. And then a balance sheet through the end of the month, uh, most recent month. Yeah, so there's a lot going on there. So if you are an S-Corp or an LLC or you're a C-Corp, we do need to have your your business returns on top of your personal returns. So we're going to get both. But I don't actually need those for you if you are less than 25% owner of your company. So um, only send us what you need to um, if you don't have to send them because you own 20% or 10%, then you're only going to give us the K-1 that you received. But if you are more than 25% owner, and even if you are 25% on the dot, we are going to need those tax returns, those business returns. And I have actually had clients that get upset about that. And they say, I'm only 25% owner, and I don't have copies of those returns. And I said, it doesn't matter. You've got to go CPA. get them. <laughs> Call your CPA. That's right. If you'd like to get me the uh, you know company's CPA's name and phone number, I'd be more than happy to call and request a copy for you. And the best thing about it is this all sounds confusing, self-employed, a lot of items. But when we call and do that hour conversation, at that point, we tell you exactly which items you need instead of the whole list. Absolutely. It makes it easy for you. It does. And with a self-employed borrower, to be honest with you, most of them have a very close relationship with their CPAs or with their accountants. And if you want to introduce us, send an email, copy us. We will email them and let them know exactly what we need. The, almost every CPA or um, accountant or tax, you know, uh, tax specialist keep a record of ever of all of the returns that they file for their clients. So it should not be very difficult. A lot of times they can even send us the W twos from you know the the wage earner and then the tax returns for the self employed and then the business return and the K ones. They usually have it all. So it really does make it a little bit easier when you just introduce us if this is too much for you to pull together. Now, maybe you're really great and you've got it all filed and organized and you can just upload it at a drop of a hat. You're just going to pull it right out of that OneDrive file or your Google Google Drive, your Google Docs, um, which is fantastic. But if it seems overwhelming to you, like uh, Cindy said, we're going to take you through the consultation first, make sure you know what we need. And if it's just too much, just introduce us and we'll get what we want. <laughs> and sometimes your CPA likes it because they know exactly what we want and they understand all the lingo. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> all right. So all borrowers, every borrower that is on the loan, 
has to provide us with a copy of their driver's license. That is number one. And it does not have to be a driver's license. We are not going to not give you a loan if you don't drive. But we do need to have some sort of identification. So whether it is your state ID, whether it's a passport, um, is there anything else military. that qualifies? Oh, yeah, military ID and uh, your um, if you have your permanent resident alien card, uh, that is actually acceptable as well. So we have to have some sort of formal uh, I identification. So I always put driver's license on there because most people have it. Uh, have a know, driver's have, license. Most people do. Yes, correct. But if you don't, there's other means. <laughs> yes, absolutely. It does not mean if you don't drive, you can't buy a house. That's not, that's not the truth. I do know people that don't drive. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I do too. And I don't blame them. I kind of want to get to the point where I don't drive either, but I'm really waiting for those self-driving cars. Yeah. Those would be nice. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I can't wait. I seriously, I, I look at YouTube every weekend and like the first thing I put in there is self-driving car and I'm, <laughs> I'm just waiting for somebody to come out with like a really good one like no joke it pulls up you know it's like in your driveway you get in it you put the address that you want and you lean back just go and it just takes you I wouldn't care if there was traffic I wouldn't care where I was going if I could like literally lean back and just play on my phone play a game or check emails or just you know that time that is spent in the car on the commute is such a waste such a waste. Imagine how relaxing it would be to get off work, sit in the commute, and actually just get in the car and relax. You, you might enjoy it then. <laughs> you might. And maybe once these self-driving cars are doing really, really great, then maybe it wouldn't be against the law to have a glass of wine <laughs> on your way home. Uh, a lot of people listen to podcasts while they're driving to work, so you are kind of probably don't want those self-driving cars to come around too soon. You can still have it on. Yeah, but right? you could still have it going. You <laughs> I mean, you could be listening to your podcast and checking your phone and you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, all right, so here we go. So um, driver's license, retirement account. So I'm going to, every, not everybody, many, many of you have 401ks, IRAs, things of that nature. And we do want to get a copy of that. Of If, number one, we need reserves for your loan, which you'll know from the consultation that we did. Or number two, if you're going to be pulling money out of one of the retirement accounts for your down payment. So along with that retirement, though, what do we need, Cindy? The terms of withdrawal. That's right. So we need your terms and conditions of withdrawal. Sometimes it's called the plan summary. And you can get that from your 401k company. So whoever holds the 401k, Fidelity, or you know whoever your bank might be, if you don't know how to get them, they're typically on their website. You can always give them a call. They'll know exactly what you're asking for when you say that you need the plan summary or the terms and conditions of withdrawal. And it is important for us to see that because we need to know that you do have access to be able to get the money out of that account should you need it for the reserves if required on your file or for that down payment and closing costs to close on the, the home. So um, just keep that in mind. It's not just the quarterly statement, but also those terms and conditions. So um, I'll let you take the next one. And then we're going to need, if you own multiple properties, we're going to need documentation on that, such as your mortgage statements, any HOA docs, your insurance, your just your declarations page, which shows the premium amount on it. Um, any tax bills that you have, anything else that might be attached to that property that's a, a hard expense. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got to document it all. Some people have two HOAs, so then you'll need to show a, each HOA statement to show how much you actually have for an output on that house, what your cost is to own it. Right. And that's how we figure out your rental income as well. So if you do have additional properties, we're going to figure out what is the rental income that you're earning. So we need to see what you put on the tax returns, and then we need to see what are you paying today. Every single year for somebody that owns a home, you understand that your property taxes change a little, your homeowner's insurance changes a little, just a little bit every year. They, they just get, they just change. They go up a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> they they don't usually do. go down, <laughs> uh, but they do move a little tiny bit every year. So we're going to take the tax returns. We're going to uh, calculate what your true income was on the property and then we're going to subtract the actual cost the carrying costs and that's how we determine how much rental income that we can actually give to you if you own a home and you're going to hold on to that property and go buy your next home so you're going to take you're going to move on to property number two then we still need to get your current mortgage statement your current taxes your current insurance so that we know what your carrying costs are on that home and then you're going to go out and get us a rental agreement to show us what you're going to rent the property for so that we can then offset that debt to help you qualify. So it is very, very important that you disclose to us all of the properties that you own. Even if you have land that is paid off free and clear, trust me, we will find it even if there's no loan on your credit yeah. report. 
And we have to hit you for the property taxes on that. So if you own any real estate whatsoever, you need to provide us with whatever you can, whether it's a property tax bill, if it's a free and clear paid off home, but you've got insurance, which I hope to God you do. You have no idea how many people I know that have free and clear properties with no homeowner's insurance. Um, but it, oh, it, it happens all, uh, all the time. We literally all the time, I will say, I need your insurance. I don't have any. Well, we're going to get you some. <laughs> well, if it's, if it's a home that is free and clear, they can actually write a letter that says, I don't have insurance and we will accept that. It's one of those things that you own a big asset and if it burned to the ground, you'd have absolutely nothing to rebuild it. So yes, we're going to try to get them insurance, try to talk them yeah. into that. But if they just won't or can't, that's okay. But we would need to get a letter. So this is where things are going to start to get, you know, we're going to review everything that you provide. And then we're going to go back to you with questions. And we're going to ask you for more information and for more paperwork based on what we see. When we pull your credit report, if we see that you have applied at Nordstrom's, or you've applied at Macy's, or you've applied at the ABC lender down the street for a mortgage. We're going to ask you to write us a letter that tells us whether or not you did or did not open a new account that is or is not new debt and how much is or is not that new debt, right? Yeah. Um, so we're going to ask you that. If we see that there's more than one you know, address on your credit report within the last 24 months, we're going to ask you, what does that address belong to? You know, it's, it's information that we need to know. We need to know where you live today. We need to source all of it. We need the two-year history. And it's, you know, it's very important for us to know that there's no outstanding debt as we're qualifying you that wasn't on the credit report to begin with. Um, talk about the bank statements. You know, we're going to look at bank statements. And then what do we see sometimes that we have to go back to someone? Extra large deposits. Yes. Yes. You went and got a bonus or grandma gave you 10 grand because she just loves you last month. Mm -hmm. And there it is. <laughs> and the bank wants to know, where is this $10,000 coming from? Because you can't keep money in your mattress. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. So then we have to source it. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing we could see on there could be a recurring bill that is not on true on your credit report. So, you know, if you have child support and you didn't tell us that you have child support, we're going to see it coming out of that bank statement and we're going to have to hit you for that debt. If you have a payment to the IRS, we're not going to see that on your credit report. That's a new thing that went away like three, four years ago that they were no longer reporting to credit reports for any IRS debt that was owed or any liens that were filed. So when that went away, there was no way for us to see it up front. But when we analyze those bank statements, we're going to see those recurring payments go through and we're going to have to hit you for that debt. Um, and the worst thing is you find your dream house, you get in it. Someone didn't go through all these extra steps with you because maybe they just want to get you in the house. And well, you, they just want to give you that pre-approval yeah, letter and get you out there and look at you. And you know, you didn't tell them cause you forgot about it. You didn't think about it, but you go find your dream house and then you lose it at the end because yeah. those things weren't disclosed. And oh, it happens. It, it happens. It does. It does. And we'll find it. If it is there, they're, they're running what's called data verify. So they're somewhat doing a, a background check that's going to pull anything. Even if you were able, if you had a foreclosure or a bankruptcy and you're able to somehow get it removed off of the credit report and you don't disclose to us that you had it, we're going to find it. It is going to, it's going to be there. It's going to come up and it can absolutely 100% kill your deal. Um, not saying that you can't get a loan with a bankruptcy or a foreclosure, but boy, is it easier to know about it up front before we get started and we're going down that road uh, before you find your dream house. <laughs> yes. Or, you know, you're, you've got alimony or you've got child support and we find it in the bank statement and you've been out with this real estate agent for months on end looking for homes. And, you know, we didn't ask you for the bank statements. We didn't look through the bank statements before giving you that pre-approval letter. You finally got that offer accepted and we're, we're working through the loan and we find it and we tell you, we're so sorry, but you don't qualify. Your debt ratio is too high. There's just, there, so these are going to be the extra things when we're reviewing the documents that you provide to us that we're going to then go back to you and ask you, why are we doing that? Well, because the underwriter is going to ask the same questions. So why not just tackle it up front? Why not just make sure that we're getting from you what we need? Um, it just does not make any sense whatsoever to not get that documentation and review it before we're sending somebody off with a pre-approval letter to start and looking we, at homes. And we've been doing this for so long, we pretty much know what every underwriter wants. <laughs> that we do. 
<laughs> that we do. Yes, absolutely. I don't yeah. think we miss much anymore. We know what they're going to want. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm going to tell you, um, actually today I had a very interesting one, um, that I've actually never had to, I've, I've had to ask for it before, but it's not very common, but I have a feeling that this year that it's going to be common. So I have a client who's a nurse. She is an ER nurse and she works per diem. So she typically works four days, contracted four days per month. Well, with COVID, she worked a ton of a ton of days, ton of overtime last year. So her 2020 W-2 is significantly larger than where her year-to-date pay stubs are now that we're in April of 2021. So I actually asked her beforehand, before even submitting the loan, to please write me a letter that explains I'm a per diem, you know, per diem. These are the days I a month that I work. This is my normal, typical income. Last year was an anomaly due to COVID. And although that seems crazy that her income was bigger and I'm asking her to explain why it's bigger, yeah, right? It's because they're going to look at it and it's going to look like there's a decline and then they're going to automatically not want to give the income to qualify. But if I can explain why there's such a sudden change, And we're going up in front of the problem, in front of the issue, and we're explaining, this is what my normal salary is. This is what my normal hours are. You can verify this with my employer. You know, this is what happened last year. This was a weird one. We all lived it, right? We all lived it. We all lived it. (laughs) Um, Then we can actually get around that issue of, hey, you've got more than 20% in declining income. We cannot allow the income. I, I don't have to do that rule, right? Right. So it's very, very important that the way that the loan is structured up front and is submitted to an underwriter, that that is how... That is how it's the, the rest of the loan is going to flow from there. It's going to go in documented, going to come out with very few easy conditions. And all we're waiting for is your insurance policy, your appraisal to come through, and we're going to get that loan over to docs. And if we're giving you a pre-approval letter in the same fashion, then you know as you're out there looking at a home with a, a real estate agent, if you see a home that you love and you write an offer you, and you get it accepted – you're going to close on that home. There's no if, ands, or buts. So very, very important that you guys take the time, do the consultation, do the complete full pre-approval and everything that we ask you for that you return and we get in your file. Because by the time your file is complete, like I said, why would we not just submit it and take it to the next step? And by doing it all in the beginning, it takes all the stress first couple days and then you get to enjoy the rest of the process of buying your home. Right. You get excited. You start measuring. You want to get in there. You're, yeah, exactly. I could go on for days. But. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So what do they do if they want to apply for the loan? So uh, right through our website or right through that handy dandy phone app, you guys can apply for the loan. <laughs> it's pretty simple. So you go to mortgagemomradio.com and there is a big button that says apply online right now. You click on that and um, it says, you know, start new loan application. You're going to put in your email address and you're going to create a password and you're going to hit apply now. And it's going to take you into the uh, secured online system and you're going to go ahead and do your application there. Once you've completed that application, it is going to, um, you're going to, and you'll know because it'll say submit and you're going to click on it and it's going to say you submitted. Congratulations, you com- you know completed the application. The it is not going to pull your credit report immediately. It is not going to give you an automated decision. The decision actually comes down to me, comes down to Cindy, comes down to Heidi, to Carrie, to everybody on the team, right? Heather That's who it comes down to. So um, we are going, once you hit submit, you're going to receive a second email that's going to say, now we want you to log back in and upload your documentation. Well, what documentation are you going to upload? You're going to upload the documentation that is in the email that either me or Cindy or Carrie or Heather or somebody from the team Heidi sent to you. So when we have that hour long consultation, we are going to send you an email with a link directly to apply. So you don't have to go to the website and find the button. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to give you the easy, easy link. So you guys can just get there. And, um, once you guys, you know, and we're going to give you a tailored list to you. So during that consultation, we're going to ask you, are you a W2 employee? Are you self-employed? How much did you make last year? What do you think your credit score is? We're going to determine what kind of loan program that we think we're going to put you on. What kind of sales price do you think you need to be in to find the home that you're looking for? Hey, you know, on Redfin and Zillow and (laughs) realtor.com, when you've been like window shopping every weekend and love, what is that average price that you seem to think that 
you're finding things that you like. Oh, it's 600. Oh, it's 700. Oh, it's 400. Oh, you know, so that is going to help us to determine the loan program and then the documentation because some programs require like a jumbo loan. Even if you are not self-employed, we still need your tax returns. So, you know, it's one of those things that we've got to determine what we need. We're going to send you a very, um, personalized list of documents that we need from you in that email. And you're going to follow the the documents in the email and upload to the computer system. So if it's asking you for something that we didn't ask you for, then don't worry about it. Only give us what we ask you for. We're going to review the loan. We're going to reach out. We're going to call you. We're going to ask you questions. We're going to make sure we have what we need. We might send you an email with an additional list of documents that we want. Um, but we will eventually clear out from that automated system, you know, tax returns if you don't need to provide them or, you know, maybe a bank statement if you're a cash out refinance and we don't need it. So we're going to make sure that we get those things cleared out at that point in time. Um, but pretty simple, actually. Have you ever, have you actually used the online system? Yeah, I have. Yeah. It's very, very simple. It really is. It's not difficult at all. So um, that is actually the end of the presentation. So I'm going to have Matt bring us back up to full screen so you can see us and all my... Debbie Marcoux is licensed by the Department of Business Oversight under the California Residential Mortgage Lender Act NMLS ID 237926. Also licensed in Arizona, 0941504, Florida, 76508, Georgia, 69178, Illinois, 031.0058339, Nevada, 57237, Oregon, Tennessee, 184373, Texas, Washington, 237926. Heidi Cycle Points, DBO, 1666881, Arizona, 101648. She's a mortgage mom she can get things done when you're in need and don't know where to go pick up the phone and call mom